All right, hello again, everyone. Um, it is Wednesday, February 20-something, 9th, 28th, still the 28th. All right, clearly I'm on top of things. Um, so it's a few days after uh, I played in RTT uh, on Saturday at Tables and Towers in Westminster, where I usually play. Um, I was going to try and go to an RTT in Martinsburg, um, which is kind of equidistant from my place um, as Westminster, but since it was the same day as this one, um, pretty much everyone in the area kind of defaults to going to Tables and Towers. Um, so I think one person was signed up for the Martinsburg one and they canceled it, <laughs> which I felt a little bad about, but hopefully I'll get there in the next month or two. Um, so in my last a uh, video, I went over my list and thinking about doing weird things with um, Slaves to Darkness and not taking any magic in this host of the Ever Chosen list. Uh, so just to review, it's a Karkadrak and a Demon Prince, 10 Chosen, 10 Knights, 10 Warriors, Corvus Cabal, a Nurgle Chariot, a Cockatrice, and 6 Theradons of Corn. Um, so I have lots of thoughts about this, but first I'll quick go over how my games went, and then I'll kind of go over my, my big takeaways and, and what I'm thinking going forward uh, with Slaves to Darkness. So the first game was against Bill Hennessy, whose name I've seen at like every tournament. He's a bottom table bully, I believe. Uh, totally... Where is he? Yeah, bottom table bully. That's what I thought. Totally lives up to the name. He was such a meanie, killing all my models. It was very uncalled for. Um, but no, I, Bill's a great dude. He's a good player. It was very nice to uh, get to play him. And uh, the bonus was he was playing the new Flesh Eater Courts, which I have not gotten to play yet. Um, so it was very nice to get some experience against the new feck. Um, there were, I think there were five people playing new feck out of like 30 people at the tournament, which was a lot. And looking through the results i think the feck mostly only lost to other feck which is not a great sign but um i think part of that is just it's a new army and people don't know how to deal with it yet i do think it's very strong but i don't think it's like broken um i definitely made a couple mistakes um in this game that could have swung things a little bit differently well, I don't know. The final score was pretty pretty far apart. But, um, yeah. Anyway, his list, double Arch Regent. Um, th I, the consensus there felt like these probably should go up a little bit in points. Um, they're both two casters, which is crazy um, for 150 points, and they can also bring models back without spending Noble Deed points, which is gross. And then, of course, if they get six Noble Deed points, they can bring half of a unit back, and Feck's whole recursion thing is that when they bring a unit back, um, it's a unit with half casualties. It's not a new unit that's half the size of the old one. So unlike Slave, uh, unlike Soul Blight, they can then summon single models back in addition to the half they brought back and just pump the model or the unit back up to full strength, which is gross. Especially when you have something like the 20 Beast Flares, which are serfs and have some models in them that are 10 or, th sorry, 10, two or three wounds, and then, you know, one noble lead point, you're bringing back two or three wounds of models here. Or if you're doing it with the guy with Cruel Taskmaster, that yeah, Cruel Taskmaster, um, one noble lead point, you're bringing back two models, and that might be five wounds in beast, in the, uh, the Royal Beast Flayers. So it's gross. So anyway, he has double Arch Regent, Arch Regent, and then double Marrow Scroll Herald, which you can't see outside of, I think, nine or something when they're near units. It's like a better lookout, sir. Um, and that's not just to shooting, that's to everything. So like magic and stuff, they're safe from. Um, so one of them had the Arcane Tome. So he, he had five casts. It was a lot of magic. Um, cool Taskmaster is kind of the clearly best command trait because you bring more things back. And then the other one had the thing to make him a priest. And I forget what Charnel Conviction does, but whatever. 
And he had nine and six crypt horrors, 20 crypt ghouls for battle line. He had grave tide, which didn't really come up much in our game. 10 crypt guard, keeping the hero safe. Two by three more big knights. And 20 beast players. Yeah, just looking at this again, like it seems like a lot. They might need they might need slight point hikes on a couple things. I could I could see the the, the arch region going up to like 170 or something. I don't know. I could see it going up a little bit. Uh, but anyway, this was on um, Pulse. This is how I set up. I kind of want to. Well, I'm here. Kind of want to open this in like paint or something. But you can see I deployed. Um, with the chariot off on the flank to set up for a surround and destroy, and the carcadrac on the other flank to set up. I should actually let you see it. <laughs> the carcadrac on the other flank to set up for a surround and destroy there. Um, then I had the ten Nurgle lights in front of the Ferdons, and then I had the Nurgle warriors and the chosen over here, and then the demon prince and the cockatrice in the middle to kind of go where they need to, because uh, they both fly twelve inches. Um, so my thought, I don't know, I, it, this didn't work out as well as I, I wanted it to over the course of the day. Um, I had been kind of thinking that um, either the warriors or the knights would be like the anvil, and then each of them has one of the hammers to go with it, either the Theradons or the Chosen, and so the Nurgle stuff could kind of be on the front line and absorb the first impact of the enemy, or tie them up, and then I can, you know, just follow up and butcher everything with the Chosen of the Aerodons. It kind of worked, but not, it didn't work out as well as I had hoped. Um, so I was two drops, he was more, um, so I did let him go first. Uh, essentially he, you know, he moved up and tagged a couple points to get his three points that you can get first turn on Pulse, and you see his beast flares were kind of spread out in the middle, his ghouls were on the other side screening out the horrors. So the ghouls were in front of the horrors, uh, the, the nine horrors, and then the beast flares were in front of the six horrors. So kind of doing the same thing I was, the horrors are the hammers, and you know, had screens in front. Great. Uh, he moved up the Morbeg knights on either side, so you can see on the right side and the left side there. Uh, and then in my turn, Sorry, and he did he did magic down first turn. So I had my my demon prince who could dispel, um, not quite on the front, and he he kept his characters back. I I couldn't really even if I had deployed on the front, like he could have deployed out of out of unbind range. So I couldn't really stop the magic down first turn, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, he moved up my turn. I jammed the Nurgle knights right into the middle of everything to tag. The nine crypt ghouls, the or sorry, the nine crypt tours, the ghouls, and the beast flares. Um, so I believe this was like end of my first turn in this picture. Um, I had tagged everything with the knights. Everything else is running up. I brought the Corvus Cabal down in the middle because there. I I, I was just like I don't think there's anything I'm going to need them for in the back line really. And so I was like they can just screen out the whole, the. Um, the chosen a little bit in case I don't get like the double or anything. Um, so yeah, that was fine. Um, like I said, the Carcadrac was on the right flank. The Demon Prince stayed back here, and then the Chariot on the left for surround and destroy. I took a risk because this was like this was a, this was a learning RTT to test out this list and just put it through its paces and stress test things. So I charged a Chariot into the Morbeg Knights over here, knowing that you know. If he killed it, then I would fail my battle tactic, and that would be bad. But the good news was I managed to kill one before he went. I don't, I don't think it was just with impact hits. I may, I think I activated this first before the knights because I knew that I needed to. I knew if I killed one, I was like probably pretty safe. Um, so I think I only took one wound back. So I got surrounded and destroy. Um, I killed, the knights killed a bunch of the ghouls, and then the crypt horrors piled in and killed, looks like, three knights. So, like, I don't know, doing, looks like he did 11 wounds to Nurgle knights, probably through all defense, like, that's pretty respectable. <laughs> that's good damage. Uh, you're going through a two-up save and, and minus one to wound. Um, 
but you know, so they were they were still okay. Uh, my turn two, I won Pryo, and I did take the double, hoping to pick up some, you know, hoping to pick up a good amount of things and make make a good dent, essentially. Um, I don't know if this was the right answer. I, oh no 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 no. I think what happened is he won Pryo and he gave it to me. I think because he was with with him already being tied up. I think he gave me the double, thinking that um, getting my double out of the way was was good for him. Uh, and I think he was right. It worked out. <laughs> um, so I had to go again. I did lead into the maelstrom because I could charge. Uh, you know, the Carcadracker over on this flank was going to get into something over here. Um, and then the Chosen and the Warriors are obviously also battle line. So at this point, I was thinking I could, like, get in and start butchering things. And, you know, I, I've kind of pinned him back off the points. And I was hoping that I could grind and keep him off the points and take the primaries and, and I would be I would be good to go. Um, so I succeeded in doing Lead into the Maelstrom. Um, let's see, this is a bit later. Es essentially, he then did Bait and Destroy, or Bait and Trap, um, in his turn. I got th turn three Pryo, so I didn't get doubled. I did run him down that turn, and then at the end of his three, the game was basically over in his favor. <laughs> so the big mistake I made was, um... In my turn to so top of two, I charged in the Nurgle Warriors and the Chosen into the Royal Beast Flares with the um, Horrors behind them. And for some reason, I don't know, I had seen the amount of damage that the Nine Horrors did the turn before, even not having all of them piled in. I think he had five that attacked that turn. And I just, like, super miscalculated. I, I really needed to all at defense the Nurgle Knights. Um, especially since... I think he had, like, a Horror Frost on the Horrors. And I, I think he had rolled, like, a 1. So I think he was... He, no, I think he rolled it... Ah, whatever. I think it was on hitting or wounding, not rend. So he wasn't, like, rend through you or anything. But he was a little buffed. Um... And I, yeah, I just I really needed all that defense the knights to make sure that those nine horrors stayed tied up in his turn because then I have another turn that I can get the Theradons up and get hopefully get the Theradons into combat and those can just wipe the horrors like easily. Instead, I was super dumb and I was nervous about like so I double fought the chosen and I was nervous about them taking a bunch of damage in between fighting and so I all that defense the chosen, which was super dumb. Um, and he ended up clearing the Nurgle Knights that turn, which surprised me. But I I knew it was a possibility, and I was like, even before he attacked you, I was like, I should I probably should have saved all the defense for them because I really need to tie up the Nine Horrors, and I and I didn't. Um, the Warriors and the Chosen did good work. Um, I finished off the Royal Beast Flayers that turn, and I killed like. I think I killed a couple of the six-man horror unit, but I didn't get into like any characters. I charged the Karkadrak into the Morbeg Knights on the right flank, over here, um, and he cleared them that turn. So I killed the Beast Flayers and the Morbeg Knights. And then the thing that just felt super bad against this army is between all his, you know, this was now four turns of doing Rousing Oration to roll five ups for every nearby unit with his characters to get to six noble lead points. So he had two characters already with six noble lead points. I think both the archery, archery gents because they're the ones that could bring full units back. Um, so his turn, he just brought the three more big knights back to life. All three more big knights were back. And then he brought the beast slayers back and there were like 15 beast slayers back. I was just like, great, I did. I just did all that work to get through, you know, the Beast Flayers is like almost 30 wounds, I think. It might be a little more than 30. So I got through two units, and they both came back immediately on his back line, ready to, to go in. Um, he had also cleared the Nurkle Knight, so the Cryptors came up and wiped the Theradons. And I said this in my, my previous video, like, 
I just keep getting like these should have been Nurgle or something. Like I just keep getting them charged. <laughs> I like never get the charge off of the corn Theranos. So they're just a little bit too slow. Um, they they need to either just be Slanesh and not care about the extra attack on the charge or the extra speed, or they need to be Nurgle so that if they get charged, then they're a little more survivable. Um, but yeah, from there, I, I also ended up killing the six horrors, and then he brought those back on the right flank where the, the pulse was heading to. And it blew my mind that like the the summoning a unit back doesn't have to be near the character it can just be anywhere from the board edge <laughs> and that's a little bit rough um so yeah, the, the horrors the three of the six horrors came back on my right flank um the the chosen after they cleaned up the um they cleaned up this stuff on the right other than the characters because the characters ran away um and ended up getting charged by the, the resummoned unit of Morbid Knights and I think the other unit of like two that were alive and the three Morbid Knights just like cleared the five remaining chosen way easier than I thought I think I, I think I rolled badly on some saves or something or he rolled extra well but like I was surprised at how quickly three Morbid Knights made a bunch of chosen disappear it was not good um, the other notable thing that happened is I actually I got like seven Nurgle warriors back into his territory, into his arch region, and I was like, "There's a you know with plus one attack, there's a chance they kill him." I didn't kill it, and then he did six wounds back to me, so I failed three four up saves, and he got six noble lead points. So he rolled really well in his attacks, and I failed every save. And that popped him up immediately back to six noble lead points. So he got to bring back another unit. So that's how he brought back the Kotors on the right flank. And that was just bad luck and painful. Um, the other thing, the other big thing I messed up, um, other than the Nurgle Knights not doing all up defense, um, is I had a chance to get, um, I think these Kotors had like retreated for bait and trap. So the, the, the Kotors that were left had retreated back over here. And his Marrow Scroll Herald, the priest, um, was kind of back on the back line behind them. And with the Karkadrak, I could have, and I almost did declare, um, kill a priest for my tactic. And I made the charge on the Crypt Horrors, and I could, you know, I had enough distance where I could have then piled into the Marrow Scroll Herald, Herald. But since I hadn't declared the tactic, I, like, didn't want to go into the Herald and kill him, because I was like, I might need that tactic later. But I wasn't going to get another chance to do it. It was just going to run away. So I, I really needed to declare that tactic. Or even even though I didn't just go in and kill the Herald anyway and get one of the characters, because you really need to start... You need to get the characters for Feck. He just, with all the magic and the prayers and the summoning back, like he's got so many buffs coming from the magic. Um, it's just, yeah, you just you need to get the characters. Those are the linchpin that makes everything else work and good. So if you can get into the characters... You know, it's it's a much easier game. Um, so we call it after three because I was like, I'm out of models, <laughs> kind of, um, and it ended up thirty two to seventeen hit. He ended up coming in third, so no shame there. Um, where is placings? Yeah, I should just say Jonathan Weaver won with a Catacross Bone Shaper uh, Bone Reapers list in Null Myriad. Still good, even though it's four up instead of two up. Still ignore. Uh, Matthew Overger was in second with an RK on list, which is interesting, and then Bill was in third. And then Jacob uh, was playing Slash, and he went 3 0 but ended up in fourth because he had very tight games. Uh, so, game two was on No Reward Without Risk, which is amazing, and it was fun to play uh, against Jake, one of the local uh, Knights of the Pond, is the club there in Westminster. Um, they keep trying to recruit me, and I have no real objection to joining. I'm just lazy. And also, I need to challenge one of them <laughs> to do it. Um, so we will see. Sorry, guys. They, uh, my, my wife came and watched game two, and they were like getting on my wife, too, to convince her to, to make me join. So we'll see. Um, anyway, so Jake, good guy. Knight of the Pond. He was playing Gits uh, in Bad Snatchers. I forget what that does. Uh, but he had a Fungoid Cave Shaman, a Madcap Shaman, a Trog Boss General. Um, Scrag rot, and then three by six rockets, 
and 2x20 status uh, with 5 fanatics. And this game, I was just like, oh, so, all right. Yeah, this was the aftermath of my turn two, I guess. Sorry, in the last game. Uh, but we're done talking about that, so let's not dwell on it. Um, so yeah, I just deployed right... You know, no reward without risk is the one with no restriction on how far you deploy away from the enemy territory. So I deployed right in the corner, you know, as jammed in there as I could, and I outdropped him. And I was like, you know what, I'm just going to take first and just jam in and hope that pinning him back in his deployment zone um, will let me take the points, um, the, the primary objectives. Um, he had 20 uh, status right in the middle, so I was like, I think I can kill those and take the center one. And then just, you know, Nurgle Knights, Nurgle Warriors chosen. And I was like, I hope that I can just grind out better than him and pin him in his, his deployment zone. So this was the end of my, I don't know, this might have been the end of one bottom of one. So you can see I jammed in the Nurgle Knights, the Nurgle Demon Prince to turn off the ward saves of the Rock Guts. Um, the Warriors went right up the middle, the Chosen went to the right into the other unit of status. And then the Theradons, as they did for most of the tournament, were just kind of derping around in the back because I was out of room. <laughs> I, was out of, I was out of frontage. Um, so they did not go in turn one, they were going to be like the second wave. Uh, just. It never, it just never worked out for me. Um, so turn one, I got five points. I did run them down, so charge with three slaves to darkness units. Um, was pretty easy. I had left, you can barely see, maybe you can't see. Um, now you can barely see. Uh, the chariot was on the left flank, getting ready for a surround and destroy. The Karkadrak was kind of hanging around so he could go back to the back edge if I needed to do surround, and then the um, the Cabal came down in the bottom right corner, which you can't see. So I got five points. His turn, he did Magic Dom, which he failed because I dispelled one of his spells. Unbound, whatever. Um, he got one point, turn one, um, from a primary. Uh, turn two, I did let into the Maelstrom, so I think... I think I must have, I must have charged in the Karkadrak and then um, something else. I forget what else I charged in. Um, so you can see here, like, we're grinding. I got, I basically got the two units of 20 Stabas. I got the six Rockets here. The, uh, the Knights and the Demon Prince really failed miserably. Um, so they had gone into these six Rockets. I shouldn't say miserably. But I was like, with turning off the wards and like the demon prince and the knights, like knights can do a lot of damage. I was hoping I could maybe clear, you know, maybe I could clear two units of six rockets that turn and just be sitting pretty. Um, but unfortunately, like you can see, I couldn't couldn't quite get all the knights in, even with the half inch to half inch thing. Um, the demon prince, I'm pretty sure, whiffed real hard. So I ended up killing like three of that unit of rockets. And then the double fight over here got me the whole other unit of six that was there. But then, of course, gets, as Jake said, is a secret death army. So, like, I killed the six rockets, but then three just popped out of the shrine. And then later, 20, you know, whatever, 10, whatever. The other the other unit of staff has popped out of the shrine. So, like, all that work getting rockets dead, they, all, they just popped back out because my demon prince got smoked. Well, a lot of things got smoked. <laughs> so what you're seeing here, um, his turn, what did he do? Oh, that's the wrong game. He did, oh, sorry, his 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 turn two, he got the double, right. So he got the double one to two, which didn't help. That was the risk taking first, obviously. Um, he failed magic on turn one. He did let into the maelstrom turn two, which he got and got five points turn two. And the other thing he did, so turn one, he got a... Yeah, so this is a little yellow guy. This is a shaman with Blizzard sitting in the middle of everything. So turn one, he did a Blizzard on the Chosen and did like 16 mortals to the Chosen. I think he picked up five and like an extra wound. It was a lot. Anyway, it was a lot. I think he did 16 mortals to the Chosen with Blizzard. So I was like, great, cool. And then turn two, he did... 
a blizzard onto the Theradons because he got a double and did like 18 wounds to the Theradons. <laughs> so he did like 35 wounds with blizzard in two turns, uh, which is like a solid third of my army. And then I didn't realize the little madcap shaman has a little AoE mortal wound spell. So it's like everything within six inches takes D6 mortal wounds. And it's not even, it's not like on a three up or something like I would normally expect. It's just everything within six, I don't know. It's like everything within six inches takes D6 mortal wounds, which is a lot. Um, so he got both blizzard and that off. And the D6 mortal wounds was enough to kill my demon prince because he had taken some damage from the trolls and all that stuff yeah uh, it must be the fungoid hold on not the mad cat fungoid yeah spore malls right casting value seven range of six inches if successfully cast each enemy unit within range suffers d6 mortal wounds well separately for each unit if you can set that up that is amazing and it was set up because I just surrounded his shaman, <laughs> not knowing that spell existed. Um, yeah, so suddenly uh, both my hammers were completely neutered by Blizzard, which was not good. And then uh, the summary of the rest of the game is I just couldn't get through the rock guts. Like once I couldn't turn off the ward saves because the prince was dead, um, and he was, you know, he was giving the all of attack of the dank hole for plus one attack, and they were popping back out of the shrine even though I killed the unit. I just I couldn't get through them all. He also he rolled a ten inch move on the fanatics. I had moved my carcadrack like back here. Or no, sorry, he moved it. He he got a ten on the move for the fanatics. I redeployed the carcadrack to get a little further away, trying to save him, and then he got like a big charge off and still got into the carcadrack, and he didn't kill it. Uh, but he did some wounds to it, and I, I did kill the fanatics back, but then the card deck was, like, hurt and sad. Um, I should have mentioned the card, the, um, the Cacatrice did, did some work this tournament. Um, I got some good four-ups to, to do the mortals and make things only hit on sixes. So this, this game I did it to, uh, some rock guts, and, uh, game one I did it to, I believe, the horrors. Uh, like the big unit of horrors at least one turn. Um, so Cockatrice was nice. It did, did well for me. Um, but yeah, summary of this game was just... <laughs> turns out Rock Guts grind harder than slaves do, especially when they're under the moon and have their saves and things. Um, so yeah, he ended up... I did, I did Bait turn two. He did Moonlight Raid turn three. I did Surround turn three finally. I really used my I used my chariot and my cabal's or corpus cabal like super poorly this game because the chariot was just literally hanging out on the board edge, waiting to do surround, and the cabal was doing that on the other side, and the carker deck was just kind of waiting. So it was it, it wasn't until turn three that I did surround and destroy, and those units were just chilling out and doing nothing until then, which was not ideal. Um, turn four I got reprisal, um, so I got the little fungoid guy um, who had killed my demon prince. I don't even remember how I got him. I got him with something. Um, his turn, he did step in the dark. Um, and I, I, like I said, he just grounded out harder than I did, and I didn't have enough bodies to outcount all these points now, even though I had pinned him in. So, you know, I was starting to get like two, three points to his five. Um, and we both, we both did intimidate um, turn five. And it ended up 21 to 16 in his favor. So not a huge loss, but um, I did learn. <laughs> Rock guts are, are strong. Um, I think I've only really played against like one unit of rockets before, of like six or nine. And I mean, obviously nine's a lot to go through, but three by six is a lot to go through. And the other downside of, of just jamming him in here um, was that I was like always within an inch of the damn netters with like everything but the knights. So I was on minus one to hit with like all my stuff for the first turn or two because the, the netters were hanging out. Um, so that was unfortunate. But yeah, it was, uh, it was a good game by him. He gave me a big old hug or two after he blizzarded things. He was like, man, he's like, I've played Beast Claw Raiders a lot and I, I've gotten blizzarded a lot and I hate it. 
but now I'm the one doing the blizzarding. He's like, I love it. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Indeed. I, I have blizzarded some things off the board myself, and it feels great. And then you're on the other side, and you're like, oh, man, this felt so dumb. This is horrible. Um, so, yeah, thanks for the hugs, Jake. No hard feelings about the blizzards. Um, it was a good game. It was fun to finally get to play him. And I'm glad that I got to play his Gits army and not his Beast Claw Raiders because I'm tired of, of Stonehorns. Um, so yeah, that was game two. Uh, game three was on uh, lines of communication, which, oh my god, did we... I don't think we ever remembered to disrupt any phases, thinking about it now. Yeah, it was lines of communication. We, I, I don't think we ever remembered. I, I like that mission, but I am so bad at remembering to um, <laughs> dis disrupt phases on either side. Um, so this game, I didn't actually get his face. I don't. I should take like selfies with these my my opponents instead of just getting like their hands and their bellies and the shots of the the table. <laughs> um, it's not the most flattering angle. Um, but yeah, this was Manny, who I had met at Tables and Towers the very first time I played and had talked to once or twice. Um, he was playing Sylvaneth, and his assessment, his fairly accurate assessment of the game pregame was like, oh man, you've got a lot of bodies and armor saves, and like you're just going to stand on some points, and I'm not going to be able to get you off of them. Um, and he, I mean, uh, that was kind of the gist of it. Um, he was, he was fairly accurate there, um, and that's what I tried to do, but it ended up being extremely, extremely close, um, and we actually didn't quite finish, um, and we, you know, we talked out, we talked out turn five, basically. There, was, there wasn't a lot left on the board. Um, I think we rolled, like, one charge, um, just to see if my Chosen would have, like, gotten into Drycha for reprisal as my last tactic, and... I rolled the chart, um, something, but I don't know if he was like, yeah, you get, you got reprisal, sure. He got, I got three points last turn, he got five. Um, and I ended up winning by one point. Um, so the way it went down, we both did surround and destroy turn one. I went first, so he must have been a one drop. Let's look at his list real quick. No, he was four drops. Why did I go first? I think I just wanted to like move up onto the points and be like, hey, move me. Um, yeah, if I remember a better reason, <laughs> I'll tell you. Um, I think I was just also set up to do Surround and Destroy first turn and just wanted to go get it out of the way. Um, this may have ended up being a little bit of a mistake. Um, because what happened was I did the Demon Prince on the left side flank. So he was kind of castled up in the corner. And I forgot to finish talking about his list. So he had a Tree Lord Ancient, the Warsong Revenant, uh, Branch Witch, and Drycha. And then he had 2x10 Dryads, 2x5 Tree Revenants, and then 6 Kurnoth Hunters with Scythes. And of course the Spike Swarm Hive that makes things go fast. It spells so good. Plus three movement and plus three charge, and when you can teleport and then charge, and you have plus three, it's gross. Disgusting. Um, See, so yeah, my turn. I did surround. I moved the demon prince up, and Drycha has like you know with her move and then her eighteen inch range shooting, or whatever it is, twelve inch range. I don't know. Whatever her her total range is like twenty one inches. So maybe her shooting is some stupid sixteen inch thing, or maybe she just moves eight inches or something dumb. I don't know, but whatever. Drycha has 21 inch range, essentially, is what I was thinking in my head after having asked him. So I moved my Demon Prince up on the left side to do Surround and Destroy, and I moved my Chariot on that side, and yada yada. His turn, he got Spice Worm Hive off, so Drycha could move an extra three inches, and then was in range to shoot the Demon Prince. I did a bunch of wounds and shootings, she's got her stupid 20 shots or whatever. And it does mortals on like sixes. Um, and then she made the charge in and finished off the Demon Prince turn one, which made me very sad. And then just, you know, bounced with Drycha because you can just try and fade and just bail back into your, your lines, which I hate. <laughs> uh, 
So that was a bad start. I should have, if I was thinking about it harder, I probably should have just started the chariot over in the spot that was riskier and started the demon prince over on the other side. Um, so I lost the demon prince right off the bat, and then it was, it really was just like him starting to pick off units like one by one a little bit. Um, he did surround, right, he also did surround turn one. I did not get doubled one to two, so I did lead into the maelstrom. Um, and basically, he had like dryads tagging both points, and that everything else was castled up in the back, trying to like either cast magic out through the trees or teleport out through the trees and then fade back, etc. Um, but I got the I, I picked up one unit of dryads with the chosen, and then I like almost picked up the other unit with the warriors. Um, the he did harness the spirit paths turn two, and failed it. I believe. I think I dispelled the spike, spike storm hive, and then maybe he failed the charge or something. I forget exactly why. No, he did. He got harness. Right. He got harness. Yeah. Yeah. This is where it was starting to work out. Where like I just had big beefy bodies on the points, and he couldn't get me off of them. So he did. He did get harness, but he only got one of the primaries turn two. So he got three points. Then he got the double. And essentially the same thing happened. He did eradicate, he got three points, but he didn't get the five. He didn't get one, two more, I don't think. Because um, you can see I had like, I had the chosen babysitting this one, I had 10 Daryl Knights on the other one, and I had the warriors over here. So like, out counting me was hard and killing any of that was hard with the way that we were all set up. Um, so turn three, I did run them down to charge with three units and got it. So at this point I'm up four, because I've had five point turns and he had two three points. Um, turn four, we both did intimidate, and again, I got five points and he got three points. And then finally, the last turn, um, let's see, right, the last turn was the one we had to talk out. So basically, yeah, whatever, I'd been standing on points and grinding. The Chosen really did nothing until our talk about turn five. They'd been babysitting this point because I knew, um... I didn't want him to just like teleport through this tree and then move on to the point. So I kind of had to keep the chosen there just to keep him off of that and keep getting my one, two more. Um, current off hunters with scythes are terrifying. He got, he got most of the knights one turn and then I had like moved them, I'd retreated them thinking I could get the march of ruin um, to take the answer cell banner into the enemy territory um, as a tactic, but he, he managed to pick them up before I was able to do that, for whenever that happened. Um, I did get a, I got a rally that could have been impactful off on the Warriors, where he was going to do Eradicate, that was the turn he was going to do Eradicate. So he was going to do Eradicate on these Warriors, there were like two left, I think, and I rallied five back <laughs> on the five up. So. There may have even only been like one left. There was like three wounds left on them, I think. So I guess two models, but like three wounds. It was something very small. And I rallied like 10 wounds of Nerf Warriors back. So he still did it, but like <laughs> he got a little nervous. Um, but like between the Tree Lord and um, the Karnoth Hunters and Dragon and blah, blah, blah. He, he, he managed to pick them up. If I had made a like big redeploy with them then also, so he couldn't get everything in, like it could have been iffy. Um, but he did get them. Um, the big disappointment. Oh my god! Again, the 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 theme of this is me being disappointed in the Theradons. Um, so he had done. He had killed two, and one of the four that were left had four wounds on it. So one wound left. Um, Drycho was kind of now off over here on the left, and that turn, I got. You know, I charged in... Whatever, I charged a bunch of stuff that turn. But one of the things I charged in was I charged the four remaining Theradons into Drycha. And I was like, these should absolutely smoke Drycha. This should not even be close. Like, I'll go with them first. I think the Nervan Lights had gone into, like, the tr Yeah. Right. The Theradons had gone into Drycha. The Knights had gone into the remaining... Dryads, I believe, and then could pile in a bit to get some attacks on the Kurnoth Hunters, 
and then the Karkadrak had gone into the Tree Lord um, over on the other side. So maybe that was my... That must have been turn three. That must have been the random down turn. Um, but yeah, so the four Theradons went into Dredja. She unleashed Hell and killed one and did some wounds to the other one. And then she stomped and killed a second one. So suddenly instead of four angry Corn Theradons, I had two Corn Theradons. And that is still... 11 attacks on three threes, ran two, three damage. So I was like, there's still a decent shot. I did zero wounds to Drycha. I rolled so poorly, and he made he made his one save. I actually, 11 attacks on threes and threes. I made him make one ran two save because I failed five out of six wound rolls, I believe. And then he made a save. And I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? These Theradons have been the most worthless pieces of shit all tournament, and they're going in the bin. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the Theradons, just massively disappointing. Um, so I did not get my Grand Strat this game. I didn't get my Grand Strat, yeah. Anyway, so to finish summarizing this game, hi, Cap. Um, we, we talked about the last turn. He gave me a reprisal because of the Chosen, um, would have gotten into Drycha, essentially. And he was like, we were out of time, so we couldn't roll like the attacks or anything, but he was like, I'll give it to you, because he's a good dude. Um, and also, like, we were 0-2 in an RTT. Like, neither of us were winning anything. Um, I don't know, maybe he was getting for Wooden Spoon or something, I don't know. But like, that, it wasn't a big deal. It was a friendly game. Neither of us were winning anything. We weren't in contention for anything. So he was like, oh, you know, you got a reprisal. I forget what tactic he did, but like, he got his five last turn. Um, and his, and his grand strat, but since he was down, he was down four points and then got his grand strat and I did not. So I ended up winning by one, 23 to 22. Um, and it, you know, it mostly worked out the way he thought it would. It was much closer than I think he was implying it should be at the beginning. Um, but it was a good game. And man, he's a good dude. Um, so let's see. This is, yeah, okay. so this was like, after I had, I had gone into all of this, you can see I lost some knights, I don't, you know, whatever, and then I basically retreated everything out to, to have a chance to do something else. <laughs> yeah, like the next turn, if I got um, Pryo or something, uh, I forget exactly why, but I, essentially I was like, if I stay in combat in my turn, I'm just gonna die, so like, let's retreat out, have the chance to do something later. And if he goes into me, like, the cockatrice can maybe make something kind of sixes, and maybe I won't die, and I can hit that with the chosen. But, um, it doesn't matter. I already told you what happened this game. Why am I rambling? Um, that is not a game from this tournament. That is a game my friends are playing right now. You don't need to see that. Um, yeah, so thoughts on the list. Um, <sighs> Slaughter of Sorcery is absolutely garbage. Um, I never got it. I just, this, this list just doesn't have the punch to like get through everything and into the back line where like the characters are hiding. Like I couldn't punch through 18 Trogoths to get to Scragrot and kill all his wizards against the good game. I couldn't get through a bunch of recursion ghoul horror shit to get three casters in the Fett game, and I definitely couldn't get three casters in Silver Death, four, three, I don't know if Dredge casts, whatever, three or four trees in the in the Silver Death game who were like teleporting around the board, like I wasn't gonna get them either. So, Slaughter of Sorcery was absolute garbage. Terrible grand strat for this army, never doing that again. Um, and you know, thinking through, even if I had faced, even if it, even if I had faced like corn or beast claw raiders or something, it's just you know, it's a net zero because they're also auto getting it. So the basically the best I was hoping for was zero points, and the worst was the reality, which I was down three points every game because I just couldn't get a slaughter resource. Um, host of the ever chosen was fine. Um, having the trip. Having the Chosen mark Slanesh for the speed is really good. Um, 
And I wouldn't say the answer. I would say the banner screw being flesh for the plus one attack on the charge was overkill. It actually was really. It was the couple times I I got the charge off of them. Like I actually did need the extra attacks. I think because I went into I went into twenty beast claw raiders with six horrors behind them, and with the double fight I was able to do a bunch of damage. Like the the banner is very good, and then of course the eroding icon is just amazing um, on the Dragon Lights. So like the double banner from Host was good. And I made probably three or four times I got, like, the five-up rally off on knights or warriors or something. I never really got it off from the Chosen, or it would have been the most impactful. Um, but, like, even though it felt like, like oh, my God, cool, I had five-up rally, I got four, five warriors back or whatever... Like, in that Sylvan F game, he still managed to kill them all for the tactic. Like, yes, it made it harder, but the rally, like, it really didn't end up mattering in any of my three games. So, like, I could see a scenario where it's impactful, um, but it just didn't end up mattering, really, in this this tournament at all. Um, so, yeah, Host of the Everchosen was meh. Slaughter of Cersei was bad. Um, I did like, I liked the Demon Prince. Like, he he whiffed a couple times and didn't do much damage. Like, I got him killed in the game against all the trolls. Um, but it's just, and, and actually I failed a lot of roars. You know, he was the monster, so I, I failed a bunch of roars. I made one or two. Um, but I, I see potential there. He's fast. It's, he's fast, which is nice. He does, like, decent damage with seven attacks now. Um... Turning off the wards could have been bigger if I didn't like get him killed early against uh, Vickets, against Jake, um, game two. So I I think I like it. I think I like I think I like the Nurgle Demon Prince. I, I think I'm keeping him in the list. Um, the Karkadrak is still very solid. Um, I totally forgot about like Conqueror's Crown, honestly. Um, like game two against the all the stabas, it would have been really nice to just throw him in, but I was keeping him back first round to destroy, and probably what I should have done was thrown him in to stop Jake from getting that primary objective, and instead keep the Demon Prince back for an early surround and destroy, and then send him in later to turn off the ward saves. Um, the, the big issue here with my hero setup is it felt bad to have only two heroes. So the, the thing with the Karkdrak was he's my Slanesh mark to make the Chosen run and charge, but he wants to be off like doing his own thing very much a lot of the time. Like he wants to be off getting me surrounded to destroy and like beating up on little units on the flanks. Like he killed the Morbeg Knights, he could have killed that priest. Um, so having him be the Slanesh mark, like he just, it felt bad to like need to keep him close to the Chosen and I kind of just didn't a couple games. Um, and he ran off and did his own thing. In which case, he could have just been normal. But the moral of the story is, like, I, I felt like I needed one more hero. There were also multiple times where, like, later in the game, like, turns four and five, both the Karkdrak and the Demon Prince had died. And then I have no heroes to do, you know, any heroic action, which is bad. Because I can't be getting... You know, my two up, because my general's dead, extra command point every turn, which could have been huge. Um, it just, I, I felt like I need one more hero. Um, and I think I do need magic. Um, <laughs> the other thing I kind of forgot, I, I first two games I just totally forgot about the new tactic <laughs> you, you can do with the guy with the Nullstone Adornment. Um, so it didn't help me because I forgot about it. Uh, maybe it would have been good. Um, but I think, I think at this point, I, th I just want to go Cabalists and have some magic because I got smoked by some blizzards. The, my opponents having core frost on things was huge. Um, it would have been real nice to have a demonic power or a core frost on my own units. Um, I just, th what I got for not having any wizards ended up being not at all worth it. Slaughter of Sorcery sucked. The Nullstone Adornment, I, I forgot to do the tactic, or I wasn't set up to do it. And 
I will say in my previous video, I said the icon, I kept calling it the pebble, but the icon is what I meant. The one that you can keep dispelling, keep unbinding if you succeed. Um, absolutely the better choice over the dust. Um, there were definitely multiple turns where I dispelled multiple spells. And I don't think the dust ever would have done anything. I was kind of trying to pay attention to whether people were rolling like double threes or double twos, and it just wasn't happening at all. Um, Scragrot Primal Miscast once, but that was on double ones anyway. It wasn't on like double twos. Uh, well, obviously it wasn't on double twos because they didn't have the idea, but it. Whatever. The, the, the dust wouldn't have done anything. If you're gonna, I think if you're going to be Nullstone, I think the icon is, is much better. Unless there's like a very specific reason you have for taking the other thing. Um, and yeah, I mean, Chosen are amazing. Chosen are always good. Um, Neural Knights are always good. I'm very tempted to like do corn with the banner. I know it's, I know it's not as good. I know it's not as good. People talk about this online on like AOS Coach Discord. I know it's not as good, but it's just so tempting to throw a Horfrost on them and hit on like ones and wound on twos and get a beautiful charge off. At that point, you should just take Varen Guard. I know. Um, yeah, Chosen are good. Knights perform well, as expected. Corvus Cabal, I still just like. I feel like 70% of the time I just don't use them very well. Like I don't bring them down in a smart spot or I bring them down too late or too early. I just need to get good. Um, I was kind of happily surprised with the way the 10 Nurgle Warriors performed. Honestly, if I was gonna pick an MVP, it would probably be the 10 Nurgle Warriors. They're just so tanky, even with just 10 of them. It's 20 wounds on a three up save, five on board versus mortals, and you're minus one to wound in combat. It's amazing. And heaven forbid you get into cover and make the enemy, you know, minus one to hit or whatever as well. All right, I just paused for a second because I had to go look up the rules and remind myself garrison versus cover. Cover is just plus one to save. Garrison is plus one to save and also minus one to hit if you're in the garrison. So yeah, you know, heaven forbid the warriors are in cover or garrison and getting plus one to save or minus one to hit and plus one to save. like. Having 10 is just, it was nice. They were always on the front line. They did some damage. You know, they almost took out a unit of dryads themselves. They didn't end up quite doing it, but um, they were just always good. And then the other thing I was like, I was very, the, the chariot was a, um, the chariot was a total experiment. And I was actually really happy with the chariot. It was very nice to have another unit that was move 12, even though it doesn't fly. Um, Hold on. Oh, sorry for the buzz. So, my wife is trying to sleep, and every I'm trying to keep the door closed, and every three minutes, my damn fluffy cat decides he wants to be either in or out of the room, whichever is the opposite, and so he keeps opening the door, and I know if I close it all the way, he's just going to meow and scratch, and it's going to be even louder. So I keep having to shut the door as he comes in and out. <laughs> um, to finish that thought, um, the chariot was great. Um, it didn't really do much damage, but like it did go into a couple things and not immediately die, which for 80 points is all I really want. Um, so like tied up more big knights for a turn, it tied up um, tree revenants for a turn and did a little bit of damage. Um, if I had magic in the list and had demonic speed, um, since it does impact mortals, um, 3d6 dice is more than 2d6 dice, so like there's potential there. Um, yeah, and it was just super nice to have a fast 80 point thing that can go on a flank and get surrounded and destroy and then just run around and be an annoying dick. Um, it's, it's easier to use for that than the Corvus Cabal is because the Corvus Cabal, obviously you need to bring down the turn before you want to do surround and destroy because for surround and destroy, you have to pick units that are on the board. And if they're on the board the turn before, if you don't get a double, the, the opponent could kill him or, you know, something. Something could go wrong. Um, so yeah, I just, I very much liked having just the little chariot already on the board and it can run around and do things. Um, the cockatrice also performed very well. I rolled a bunch of my four ups to make things hit on sixes and it was nice. It's also just another fast thing. So cockatrice gets the thumbs up, it can stay. And then these garbage pieces of crap, the Theradons, 
I just... I either need to switch up how I'm using them. I considered maybe I could split them into two units of three and not have them be like a big BT, you know, delete anything hammer, but like two smaller little counterpunch units. Because um, with the six, it just felt like... Felt like I had a... Like the... I felt like the surface area of everything else in my army was already big enough that they were always just kind of left behind everything else, just kind of like twiddling their thumbs, waiting for an opening to like do something. And then I would either get doubled or not be set up at the right time, or they were too slow behind their uncle knights, and like they would just get charged and, and killed. Or they would charge Dreicha, and half of them would die on the charge randomly and then do zero wounds. Um, so I was like all hyped up that Theradons might be good for 150 points now, and instead they were terrible, <laughs> and they were so, they were so bad to the point where like I don't even want to try and salvage this right now because then I don't have to paint them before the GT in March. Um, so if I just drop them from the list, I have much less to paint. Because um, again, I was like. I, it feels like they need to either be Slanesh to be a little faster or be Nurgle to be a little tankier. But I think those points are better used elsewhere, sadly. Um, so going forward, what I'm going to test next is I'm going to change from... I should just pull up the list on my phone so I don't lie. Uh, I'm going to test a very similar list with some tweaks in Kabbalists. And again, i got to shut the door again for the cat. Told you. Right, so um, I'm going to change this to Cabalists. I'm going to drop the six Theradons, and for that, what I can get is a Chaos Lord on foot, who is a wizard, and ten more Nurgle Warriors. And I liked having the ten Nurgle Warriors so much that I'm going to have two separate units of ten, I think, initially, to test out. Um, rather than one unit of 20, just have a little bit more um, flexibility in board presence. I've run 20 warriors before, and like they stuck around wherever they were, but I, I think having 2 by 10 and just being able to be in separate places is big enough that I'm going to do that. Um, and then instead of Garbo, Slaughter of Sorcery, which I never did, um, having the Chaos Lord on foot... Um, gives me a good chance at spellcasting Savant because he can bodyguard onto either the Chosen um, or one of the warrior units. So yeah, you pick at the start of the game, but he can have a three up, I think, bodyguard ward onto those um, and is pretty tanky in his own right. You know, he's six six wounds, three up save, five up first mortals. Um, is that true? No, he does not have the five up first mortals. But whatever. He has the three up bodyguard anyway. On to something. Um, he also has like the double fight thing that Karkadrak does with his retinue. So like after he attacks, he can trigger his bodyguards to fight. Um, if they're only within twelve. So like it's another thing to to kind of start winning the activation wars. And in the setup I'm gonna try out um, He's the general, like I said, for the Grand Strat, and I gave him Shaman of the Chilled Lands, so he has the option for Blizzard and Hoarfrost. Uh, I also gave him Binding Damnation, the spell to make something strike last. And now he is Slanesh, so the Karkadrak is freed up to be something else, because the Chaos Lord can stay near the Chosen and give them run and charge. And that lets me switch up the Karkadrak Lord to Nurgle to make him a little tankier in combat, and even more of a little you know, cowboy guy that can go off and do his own stuff. And since it's in Kabbalists, he can then also take Blizzard. So he's, you know, he's tanky, he's got Blizzard, he's just this nice little package that is very independent and can just go off on a flank and kill things. And the Demon Prince loses, since he's not the general, he loses the two extra wounds and being a monster. But I think he's still useful to turn off ward saves in Nurgle. And being in Kabbalists, he can then take Flaming Weapon. So he'll hit a little harder, he can still turn off ward saves, he just won't be roaring or stopping anything, which I think is okay. Um, and those changes, I think, opens up 
like, I mean, <laughs> just having a grass drought I can do opens up three points every game that I can get, and then Magic Dom, I think having the opportunity for Magic Dom is better for turn one than having to immediately do Surround and Destroy or something else. So I'm excited to test out that. Um, I'm feeling like that's probably what I'll take to the Battle Against Alzheimer's GT in Westminster in March, but hopefully I'll get a couple games before then. And I will report back. Um, anyway, take it easy, everyone. Thank you for listening, and see you all again soon.